Many years ago, a little girl was born to a loving mother and father. They lived happily until one day the mother became ill and sadly died. The father was grief stricken and found life difficult without a wife, so he decided to marry again. His new wife had also been married before and had two daughters, Camilla and Daniela. He hoped that they would all live happily together as a family, but this did not happen. It soon became clear that neither his new wife nor her daughters liked his daughter very much, and they began to be very unkind to her. They made her do all the housework. At night, she was forced to sleep in the kitchen, where she would curl up near the cinders of the fire to keep warm. So they called her Cinderella. One day, Cinderella was busy washing and ironing in the kitchen when her two stepsisters burst through the door. Where are my clean clothes? Iron this dress now, demanded Camilla. First, you can tidy my room and clean my shoes, cried Daniela. No, me first, screamed Camilla. No, me, shouted Daniela. Then they both began to fight. Daniela pulled Camilla's hair. Camilla pinched Daniela. Daniela kicked Camilla, and Camilla yelled so loudly that Cinderella had to run quickly to steady the china on the dresser. What is going on? Cinderella's stepmother appeared at the door. What is all this screaming about? Her daughters stopped immediately and pointed to Cinderella. She won't iron my dress," said one. "She won't clean my shoes," said the other. "She, She is mean and spiteful to us," they both added. Cinderella's stepmother glared with a face as cold as iron. "Cinderella, this is disgraceful. I shall tell your father what a lazy, nasty girl you are." She then. Put her arms around her two daughters, saying, "Don't you worry, my darlings. I have a very special treat for you both." Daniela and Camilla smiled very satisfied smiles. Then they turned to Cinderella and pulled very rude, ugly faces before leaving with their mother. My stepmother always gives me a lot of work to do. I have to polish the kettle until it shines, make the dinner and wash the pots, wash the clothes and mend the socks. I wish I had some help. Can you help me? This pot is used for cooking food. It's still very greasy, so let's give it a scrub. This is the broom for sweeping the floor. Let's sweep this dust away. Thank you. That's nearly all done. This pot is used for cooking food. It's still very greasy, so let's give it a scrub. There's just one more job to do. Let's do it. Plates need cleaning after every meal. Will you help me to wash them? Well done! You've been a great help. All my jobs are done, and everything is nice and clean. Cinderella, where are you hiding? I see you're lazing around again. Come here, I have a task for you. We've been invited to the ball at the palace, and you have to help us get ready. My stepmother always gives me a lot of work to do. Cinderella was on the verge of tears when she noticed that her stepmother had left something on the kitchen table. It was an invitation. She picked it up, wiped away a tear, and read.
His Royal Highness, the Prince, cordially invites you to attend the Royal Midsummer Night's Ball. At the Palace, evening dress essential. RSVP. Oh, how wonderful it would be, she thought, to go to a ball dressed in a beautiful evening gown and maybe even meet the Prince. She began to imagine the scene. The magnificent palace with its majestic towers, the glittering ballroom, the guests looking glamorous, and the music. Oh, what beautiful music there would be! The dancers would be swirling and gliding across the dance floor, and of course, the prince would be there, looking handsome and charming. He would see her and make his way across the ballroom and. Suddenly, her stepmother returned. Give that to me! How dare you read my mail! As she snatched the invitation, she said, "Don't think that you'll be going to the ball because you won't. You have far too many chores to do." Get on with your work, you idle girl! When her stepmother had gone, big tears started to trickle down Cinderella's face. She had thought to tell her father how badly she was treated, but felt he might not understand and be disappointed with her. It was her stepmother's word against hers. Sometimes it was more than she could bear. Cinderella, you had better make us look stunningly beautiful. Find me a fabulous ball gown so the prince can't take his eyes off me. I have made them a wardrobe of different dresses. Will you help me to choose the best ball gowns for them? I'm first. Let me try this one. I shall dance with the prince. He won't be able to resist me because I'm so beautiful. I want this one. I like red. I shall sweep the prince off his feet as I glide along in my beautiful silk chiffon. Thanks, everyone. Success! I think we found them the perfect dresses for the ball. My sisters are always difficult to please. I bet you'd like to go to the ball, Cinderella. My stepmother won't let me go to the ball. I have to stay here and work. But you can't go to the ball because you're ugly. During the following weeks, Cinderella was kept busy making new ball gowns for her stepsisters and stepmother. She cut and stitched and sewed until finally the dresses were finished. When the day of the royal ball arrived, there was great excitement. Cinderella was ordered to help Camilla and Daniela get ready. They bustled into the dressing room and began their demands. Polish my fingernails, Cinderella. Cinderella, brush my hair. Tie my bow. Straighten my dress. Find my petticoat. Fasten my buttons. Fetch my shoes. Do it now. Poor Cinderella rushed here and there, trying to do everything she could for her stepsisters. She dressed them beautifully in their new ball gowns. Camilla's gown was made from the finest gold and blue silk, and Daniela's from red and gold satin. They both put on their richest jewels, their rings and necklaces of pearls and diamonds. They paraded around the room like peacocks, glancing at their reflections in the mirror, each thinking themselves more beautiful than the other. My dress is more beautiful than yours," said Daniela proudly. "No, it's not. My dress is the most beautiful. Red is an ugly colour. It shows up your spots," Camilla replied. "No, 
it doesn't. Red is a royal colour, and I shall dance with the prince. He won't be able to resist me because I am so beautiful. You're as ugly as a toad. It will be me who sweeps the prince off his feet as I glide along in my beautiful blue silk chiffon. Taunted Camilla, Daniela's face turned crimson until it almost matched her dress. We shall see, shall we? She said. Then she launched herself angrily at her sister, but Cinderella quickly came between them. Please stop. You are both very beautiful, and I'm sure you shall both get to dance with the prince. Yes, I suppose we shall," said Daniela smugly. "But you won't!" Ha ha ha," added Camilla cruelly. Then, with a swish of silken petticoats, they left without a word of thanks. The carriage arrived to take them to the palace. Cinderella's father escorted his wife and his stepdaughters to the door, and then said, <laughs> "Where is my daughter? Isn't she coming to the ball with us?" "Goodness, no," replied his wife. "She has been very badly behaved, and as punishment, she must stay at home." Her husband shook his head. "What a pity! She used to be such a good, sweet child." Cinderella watched as the carriage drove away, and she felt a deep sadness in her heart. She sank down by the fireside, and this time she could not stop the big, sorrowful tears. She wept pitifully. Oh, why can't I go to the ball? I wanted to go so much. Why must I be treated so unfairly? I wish my mother was here to care for me. Oh, how I wish I could go to the ball! All of a sudden, there was a flash of blue light, and there beside her stood a beautiful lady, whose dress of shining midnight blue sparkled like starlight. She held a twinkling fairy wand and looked at Cinderella with the sweetest smile. And you shall go to the ball, dearest girl. Don't be afraid, Cinderella. Your mother has sent me to grant your wish. I am your fairy godmother, and I'm here to care for you. Cinderella was so amazed that she found it hard to speak at first. Oh, thank you! This is very kind of you. But how can I go in these old clothes? And however shall I get there? Follow my instructions precisely, and all shall be well. Fetch me quickly the four mice, two lizards, and the friendly grey rat that you keep as pets. And the largest pumpkin you can find. Cinderella did as she was asked, and when the creatures and the pumpkin were all assembled, the fairy godmother waved her magic wand, saying, "No more pumpkin, rat, lizards, and mice to be seen, but a golden coach and horses fit for a queen." Then, with a puff of magic smoke, Cinderella found herself. Outside, standing before her was the most glorious golden coach. It was pulled by three white horses that held their plumed heads high against the evening sky. There were also two smart and very well turned out footmen to attend her, and a white whiskered coachman to drive the coach. It was indeed fit for a queen. Good heavens! Exclaimed Cinderella, and then she noticed her ragged apron. Don't you worry about that," said her fairy godmother softly. Now close your eyes and stand very still. She waved her magic wand a second time, saying, "No more an old and ragged dress, but a beautiful gown fit for a princess." There was a silver flash of light, and when Cinderella opened her eyes, she was amazed. Her rags had been transformed into the most fantastic ball gown that shimmered with a magical blue light. 
her gloriously shining hair was crowned with a blue crystal tiara, and she noticed on her feet the prettiest, daintiest crystal dancing shoes. She smiled and glowed from head to toe with the most extraordinary beauty. Now you are ready for the ball," said the fairy godmother. "You look beautiful." Oh, this is my dream come true. How can I ever thank you enough? Cinderella replied gratefully. Now, before you go, please listen carefully, Cinderella. My magic will only last until midnight, so you must be home before the clock strikes twelve. Here's your invitation. Off you go now and enjoy yourself. But remember what I have said. Cinderella smiled and nodded. The coachman opened the coach door. And she was taken swiftly to the palace. You shall go to the ball, Cinderella. How can I go in these old clothes? And however shall I get there? Follow my instructions precisely, and all shall be well. Fetch me quickly the four mice, two lizards, and the friendly grey rat that you keep as pets, and the largest pumpkin you can find. I wonder why the fairy needs the pumpkin and lizards. Let's find them. We found everything you asked for, Fairy Godmother. With my spell, I can change the pumpkin into a coach, and the lizards into two splendid footmen. Fairy, you are amazing. But I'll need someone for a coachman. With my spell, I'll change the mice into horses, and the rat will become a white-whiskered coachman. Please help me find the mice in the cellar. Can you see them? Well done! We found everything. No more pumpkin, rat, lizards, and mice to be seen, but a golden coach and horses fit for a queen. No more an old and ragged dress, but a beautiful gown fit for a princess. This is wonderful. I feel like a princess. You shall have the most magnificent magical ball gown. I've never seen such a fantastic ball gown. We are almost finished. Look in the coach and see what you can find. Put on your shoes. And off you go to the palace to enjoy yourself. My magic will only last until midnight, so you must be home before the clock strikes twelve. Oh, this is my dream come true! However, can I thank you enough? As she approached the palace, Cinderella could hear the orchestra playing a lilting and melodious waltz. Her heart was beating fast, and she felt as though she was floating, being drawn towards the music and the ballroom. She waited at the top of the stairs to be announced, and a hushed silence fell amongst the guests. The conductor dropped his baton, and the orchestra stopped. Your Royal Highness, lords, ladies, and gentlemen, I am pleased to present the Princess. Mirabella, was that really her name? It was the name clearly written on the invitation given to her. So perhaps for this night, she really was a princess. Her beauty was so enchanting that everyone gazed in wonder. The prince fell immediately and instantly in love, and by the time she reached the last step, his hand. Was holding hers. Please, may I have the pleasure of this dance? Why, of course, your highness. She replied, smiling, and her heart was fluttering like a thousand butterflies. The music played, and they danced and danced. They twirled and glided across the ballroom. It was obvious to everyone that the prince had found the girl of his dreams. And she had found her one true love. Of course, 
This didn't please Camilla and Daniela. They began to argue and blame Cinderella for not making them look beautiful enough to attract the prince's attention. It's just not fair! They screamed and they sat with grumpy, ugly faces for the whole evening. Meanwhile, the king and queen smiled and looked at each other. They make the perfect couple, don't you agree, my dear? The king nodded and squeezed the queen's hand. I do, my dear. I do. Cinderella had not noticed the time passing until the clock began to chime. It was the first stroke of midnight. She suddenly realized that her ball gown would turn to rags and the golden coach would turn back into a pumpkin. At this thought, she fled in haste back up the ballroom staircase, losing one of her crystal dancing shoes as she did so. She had no time to pick it up, and to her horror, as the clock struck the last chime of midnight, she saw her golden coach disappear. Once again, she stood in her old clothes and ragged apron. Her enchanted evening was over. Back at the palace, her hasty exit had left everyone in some confusion. The prince was dazed and unable to understand why his princess had left so suddenly. He picked up her shoe as he followed her swiftly up the stairs. He searched the palace and the palace gardens for her, but she was nowhere to be found. Finally, he returned to the ballroom with a heavy heart, and holding the dainty crystal dancing shoe gently in his hands, he announced, I shall search the kingdom far and wide, and whosoever this shoe fits shall be my bride. The guests began to leave. The evening was over. No, it's midnight already. I must run away quickly before my dress turns back into my old ragged clothes. I'm late. Oh dear, the coach has turned back into a pumpkin. How could I forget my fairy godmother's words? I need to leave now. The prince mustn't see me. My scruffy appearance and this ragged dress will scare him away. I need to escape down the empty road so that no one sees me. A golden key can open any door. Where is it? everyone where has she gone why did she run away she is the girl of my dreams I must find her oh look this is her crystal shoe it must have slipped off her foot as she ran away I shall search the kingdom far and wide and whosoever this shoe fits shall be my bride the following day the whole kingdom woke to rumors of the crystal shoe and of how the beautiful and mysterious princess had stolen the prince's heart. They learned how she suddenly left him as the clock struck midnight and how a royal search party for the girl whose foot would fit the crystal shoe had been organized. It was ordered that all the young ladies in the kingdom were to try on the shoe. Whosoever the shoe fitted the prince would take as his bride. 
There were squeals of delight from the stepsisters when they heard that the prince's messenger was on his way. My foot is going to fit. I just know it. Squeaked Camilla, gazing at her painted toenails. I'll be surprised. Hooted Daniela. You have feet like gibbers. Mine are half the size of yours, so I'm a hundred times more likely to be the prince's bride. Their mother came in just in time to stop the quarrel. Now, girls, I want you to look your best. Cinderella, help your sisters, and then go and stay in the kitchen. They won't want to see you. You weren't at the ball. The royal messenger arrived, and Camilla was first to try on the shoe. She heaved and pushed her foot in as far as she could, but it was clearly never going to fit. Daniela smirked and muttered, "Gipper feet." Under her breath, it was her turn next. She pushed and tried as hard as she could to squeeze her foot into the shoe. Suddenly, she screamed that she had cramp in her toe. She yelled and squealed and pulled such ugly faces that the page boy and the royal messenger found it hard not to laugh. Oh dear! The shoe does not fit either girl or any other girl in the kingdom. We have visited them all, sir. The page boy informed the royal messenger. The messenger then turned to Cinderella's father, who had been watching patiently, and asked hopefully, "Have you no other daughters?" "Ah, yes, I have a daughter. I believe she'll be in the kitchen," he replied. "But she didn't go to the ball," interrupted his wife. But our orders are that she must still try on the shoe," said the messenger. The stepmother went and called for Cinderella. Cinderella appeared in her old clothes and apron and sat down to try on the shoe. Of course, her dainty little foot slipped into it with ease. Everyone in the room gasped. Goodness, it fits! Cinderella then produced the other shoe. From her apron pocket and put it on. There was a flash of blue light, and once more she appeared in her ball gown, as beautiful as ever before. The royal messenger immediately took Cinderella to the palace, where the prince was waiting for news of his lost princess. Success, your royal highness! We have found the girl whose foot fits the crystal slipper. Reported the messenger. The prince smiled and gazed at Cinderella's pretty face. He knew instantly that this was the girl that he had fallen in love with at the ball. The prince took her hand. My dearest Mirabella, will you do me the greatest honor and be my bride? Cinderella nodded and smiled. She could hardly believe what was happening to her. Her stepmother fainted. When she came to, she was angry at Cinderella's father for telling the royal messenger about his daughter. They would certainly have chosen one of my daughters to marry the prince if that dreadful Cinderella hadn't appeared. So, in a huff, she packed their bags, took all the money left with her two daughters, and they were never seen nor heard of again. Please, ladies, try on the shoe. Me first. Your feet won't fit. They're much too big. Me first. My foot is going to fit. I just know it. Can you stop the quarrel? Tap on the sister that you think should try on the shoe first. Ah! Ouch! My foot is stuck. Help! The shoe doesn't fit you, lady. Oh no! It's too small. It won't even fit my big toe. Please, may I try? How can it be your shoe? You weren't at the ball. I have been ordered to search the kingdom far and wide, and whosoever the shoe fits shall be the prince's bride. She can't be the princess at the ball. I don't believe it. My lady, 
The shoe fits perfectly. I will take you to the palace where the prince is waiting for you. This dress is beautiful. This is wonderful. I feel like a princess. The royal wedding was announced. When the day came, bells rang, clocks chimed, and a public holiday was given. Everybody celebrated with feasting, music, and dancing in the streets. It was a glorious day. Cinderella's father walked her proudly down the aisle. The king and queen gave them their blessing, and with a wave of her magic wand, so too did Cinderella's fairy godmother. The prince had found the girl of his dreams, and Cinderella, or should I say, Mirabella, had found her one true love. Needless to say, they all lived happily ever after.